Happy Little Games. This game was requested by Patreon supporter Evan. Thank you so much for your support. Growing up, I always loved clowns. The few times the circus actually did come around here, I can recall my parents taking me and having a great time. We were even able to attend the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and & Bailey Circus Show and Museum in Wisconsin, which for any fan of clowns was a day in heaven. As the years went by though, there seems to have been a surge in cholerophobia or the fear of clowns. I'm sure in no part thanks to creepy clowns such as Pennywise, the doll from Poltergeist that strangles the little boy, and of course this guy. Today though, we are not talking about any creepy clowns. We are going to discuss a happy little clown by the name of Circus Charlie. What silent film was the inspiration for this game? So put on your makeup and get ready to go because this is the history of Circus Charlie. The year is 1983 and Japanese arcade developer Konami are establishing their roots to become one of the best arcade developers in the world. The company introduced its first video arcade game in 1978, but it wasn't until 1981 when the hits really started flowing. They introduced arcade hits such as Scramble, Tutankham, Cubert, and Time Pilot. These were all released within a couple of years time, not counting the 15 or so other releases. If you look at their catalog of games, there is a wide variety of innovative gameplay types from 8-Ball Billiards, Puyon, which is a shooter inspired by the Three Little Pigs, and the greatest sports game of all time, Track and Field. There was even a game called Mikey in which you have to guide a student named Mikey around a school collecting hearts from your girlfriend while being chased by the school staff. One of the higher ups at Konami had recently seen the 1928 silent film The Circus which starred Charlie Chaplin as his character The Tramp. Contrary to popular belief, this was not about my first three girlfriends. The wacky hijinks that soon ensue after Charlie is taken on by the circus was the initial basis for Circus Charlie. In the late 70s, there were a couple of arcade games by the name of Clowns and Circus, which featured clown jumping and balloon popping, but none with an overall circus theme. Konami set out to create a massive game with six mini games included, which made it feel like you were performing under the big top. The designers had wanted to implement some of the bigger draws found at the circus, which would include the trapeze, ring of fire, and trampolines. They also wanted to include the live action attractions such as the monkeys, horses, knife throwers, fire breathers, and lions. Thanks to the power and technical wizardry from the programmers at Konami, we were treated to a game that not only looked like the circus had just rolled into town, but also sounded like it as well. The game is set up similar to track and field in which you have to complete six mini games in the quickest time possible, all without breaking your clowny neck. Circus Charlie was released in the arcades in 1984 by Konami. You take on the role of Charlie, who is a little bit clown in the dumps because he has to audition for the circus. To do so, he has to complete the six events ahead of him. The gameplay is fairly simple, with you moving Charlie from left to right with a single button to jump. You are trying to survive the performance, all the while avoiding touching anything except for the various money bags throughout the levels. Once you make it to the end of the event, it's on to the next. Upon first starting up the game, you can choose which level to start on. This ranked from easy to hard, but I always pick the easiest one just because I wanted my quarter to last the longest. 
You can only pick the same stage five times and then you are essentially locked out of that level if you don't complete it. As I mentioned, you want to complete the levels as quick as you can because the faster you get through it, the higher the point bonus you will receive. Level 1 sees Charlie riding a lion as he jumps through fiery hoops and over pots of fire. You can control Charlie's speed by pressing the left or right which will be an absolute necessity in the later levels. You will also notice money bags that appear and if you are able to grab all of them without dying an eagle will fly overhead and drop even more coins. Level 2 sees Charlie walk the tightrope jumping over various monkeys. Once again you can move back and forth on the tightrope as the monkeys will come out single file and then eventually jump on top of each other. You can earn additional points by jumping over two monkeys at the same time. Level 3 are the trampolines which can be played easy and fast or go for the most points which is hard and slow. You can always just push to the right and it will take you right to the very end nearly avoiding any damage. However, there are money bags but you have to bounce on the same trampoline 3 times to reach them. If you bounce on it 4 times the trampoline will send you skyrocketing through the big top above and you will lose a life. You also have to contend with knife throwers and fire breathers as well. <laughs> Level 4 is the ball walk in which you have to jump from ball to ball until you reach the end of the level. You have to time your jumps perfectly because the incoming balls move randomly. It is possible to jump over one ball onto another ball but it is tricky so a bit of strategy is needed. You also have to make sure you jump onto the platform at the very end of the level otherwise you will die. Level 5 is the horse hurdles in which you have to battle the dastardly springs. Charlie rides his faithful pal Buttercup as he bounces from spring to spring all the way to the end of the level. You can either bounce on top of the spring or over it. Thankfully your horse can run at 3 different speeds which definitely helps Charlie out. You do gain more points by bouncing on the springs though. As the level goes on the springs get narrower making it even more difficult. Once again you have to jump off your horse onto the platform to successfully complete it otherwise you will die. And finally level 6 is the trapeze level. The first thing I noticed even playing this back in the day was how smooth the animation was on the ropes. You have to use your momentum by pushing the joystick left and right and timing the jumps precisely. You also have to make sure to touch the center of the pole at the bottom of the trapeze to make a successful switch. If you jump anywhere else you'll fall to your death. There are also trampolines which can be used for a massive jump and point bonus if you land it. There are clouds hanging upside down to grab you in your quest to reach the end of the stage. If you are successful you get to make out with the beautiful circus girl after which you are cloned 257 times at the bottom of the screen. I don't understand what just happened but it's kind of cool to see. After this the game repeats but only at a higher difficulty.
After every tenth stage, a bonus level presents itself in which the trampoline stage becomes flooded with water and killer dolphins are on the loose, taking the place of the fire breathers and knife throwers. These dolphins will not only jump over the trampolines, but under them as well. Once again, there are money bags that you can get for more points. It wouldn't be a Konami game if there weren't a few secrets included. On the Flaming Hoops level, if you stay to the left at the very beginning and jump three times before advancing through the first hoop, a 1-Up Charlie doll will appear. If you jump forward through a hoop and then back through the hoop without dying, a 1-Up will appear. At the end of the tightrope stage, if you manage to walk past the platform rather than jump on it, a big pile of money bags will appear and if you jump up and grab them, you are granted 5,000 points. The graphics are really well done, especially for 1984. As you would expect from a game based on the circus, there are lots of colors along with very detailed character sprites and backgrounds. Thanks to the simplistic controls being fine-tuned to your player, everything feels just right, which is what you need for those precision jumps. The sound effects and especially the music pulls it all together, creating a memorable experience in the process. I hadn't played this game for a couple of years, but as soon as I heard the first few musical notes on level 1, a big smile crept across my face. According to Konami's Arcade Flyer, this was the world's first circus-themed game. Now, it may have been the world's first multi-game circus-themed title, but now we know there were previous attempts in the arcade that involved clowns and balloons. The familiar, catchy music that you hear are versions of 1885's American Patrol and also 1866's Blue Danube. Circus Charlie does have a couple of cameos, including the arcade game Mikey. If you go and headbutt the teacher's desk three times on the first stage, a Charlie doll will appear, giving you extra points. Charlie was also adapted as one of the video games for the manga Games Collection back in 1999. He also had a brief appearance in the manga Famicom Runners High. In 1998, the game was released as part of Konami's 80s arcade gallery for the PlayStation 1. In 2007, it was released in the compilation Konami Classic Series Arcade Hits for the Nintendo DS. In 2015, a version of Circus Charlie was available on the Nintendo Wii Virtual Console. Circus Charlie was one of the games featured in Konami's Pixel Puzzle Collection, which was released for Android and iOS in 2018. In 2020, the game was released for the Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 4 as part of the Arcade Archive series. The game was released for a few different platforms back in the day, so let's go ahead and look at the Commodore 64 version. This was an early release for the system, and it really shows. The graphics are large, blocky, and ugly. As a matter of fact, they're not just ugly, they're fugly. Although the sprites are not very attractive, the gameplay is fairly smooth and the controls are responsive. Apparently, the horse that you ride on the spring level was given a trip to the glue factory because he is missing. Instead, you are riding a lion for the second time. The sound effects and music are decent and are not queef-worthy by any means. Five of the six levels made it over with only the trampoline level missing. The MSX version looks a bit closer to the arcade game than the Commodore 64's efforts, but the grass appears to have been burned in a fire because everything is black. The sprites and animation look much more arcade accurate in this version as well, except when it comes to the trapeze level. There is entirely too much flickering going on, and the animation of the ropes really hurts the gameplay. Other than that, the scrolling is a bit smoother than the Commodore outing, and the music sounds really good. The trampoline level is also missing.
The game was ported to Sega's SG-1000 in Taiwan, but I couldn't determine if it was actually licensed or not. It was ported from the MSX version, so it's essentially the same game. An unlicensed version was also released for the ColecoVision by Team Pixel Boy in 2011, which again was ported from the MSX version. The version most people are familiar with is the Famicom or NES version. Graphically at the time, this was as close as you could get to the arcade game on a home system. If you notice, we actually have green grass this time around and the little color goes a long way. Sprites are very detailed with nice smooth scrolling to complement. The audio sounds great, especially for an early Nintendo title. The controls feel just like the arcade game, which is exactly what you're going for when doing an arcade conversion. The trampoline level once again is missing. What's also missing is you getting your Mac on with your circus girlfriend. The game will just endlessly loop until you've exhausted all of your lives and it's game over. Circus Charlie was another excellent arcade title by the Masters at Konami. This was always one of my favorites growing up and I still enjoy playing it to this day. If you've never had a chance to jump over some monkeys, ride a lion, or perform under the big top, be sure and give this game a shot. You'll be glad you did. Once again, thanks for Patreon supporter Evan for requesting this video. If you would like to support me on Patreon, check the link below. Also, if you enjoyed my content, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Thank you everybody for watching.